Let's talk about monkeypox. So city mm -hmm. after city, state after state are starting to declare states of emergency over monkeypox. First, it was New York City, uh, then it was California. So now we have, you know, we have California declaring a state of emergency as monkeypox spreads. Here was the headline uh, in the New York Times. Three states have now issued emergency declarations in the past week, um, as has New York City and San Francisco. You can see here on the screen. And then, of course, you have now Illinois um, issuing a state of emergency. The U.S. Illinois governor declares state of emergency over monkeypox. There you go. And there's the the headline there, Governor Jay Pritzker said on Twitter on Monday, I am declaring a state of emergency to expand the resources and coordination efforts of state agencies in responding to and treating, preventing the spread of monkeypox virus. Um, so there you go. That's Illinois. Now you have uh, you have California, you have New York. Um, but as The New York Times is reporting, there are no deaths. Right. So the New York Times in the same article that's pointing out, of course, that they're declaring states of emergency. No deaths have been reported so far in, in the United, the United States. States. And monkeypox is rarely fatal. But the rash caused by the virus has led to intense pain in some patients. Yeah. Just like chicken pox. Yeah. Just like chicken pox. Right. Have um, you ever had chicken pox? I don't know if it's just like chicken pox, but the, the symptoms do seem to be very similar. Um, and in fact, most reporting is that the symptom that it's that you also get flu like symptoms. Okay. So. Well, meanwhile, big pharma, of course, racing to cash in on this latest vaccine. Uh, while there are known natural cures that do exist. In fact, this study is being blocked on social media right now. A number of people um, who posted this study have been banned or blocked or had it removed. I love this, right? That Facebook and Twitter are removing studies about the effectiveness of resveratrol in virtually stopping the spread of monkeypox. This is just one example. Um, so I also would like to point out that resveratrol is the chemical that red wine drinkers mm -hmm. like to tout as the reason that they drink red wine. Um, I, you cannot get enough of it from just one glass to like really have a big enough difference, but still. But in pill uh, form, resveratrol. Right. Right. And here's the study, right? Here's the study. Let's put this up on this. Here's the abstract. Um, the study, pox virus continue, uh, continue to cause serious disease even after eradication of the historically deadly infectious human disease, smallpox. Pox viruses are currently being developed as vaccine vectors and cancer therapeutic agents. Resveratrol is a natural uh, poly polyphenol st stebanoid uh, found in plants that has been shown to inhibit or enhance replication of a number of viruses, but the effect of resveratrol on pox virus replication is unknown. In the present study, we found that resveratrol dramatically suppressed the replication of the virus. But you promote this on social media in the face of big pharma racing to put out new vaccines for monkeypox and you'll be banned or it'll be taken off of social media, which has happened to a number of people. So let's talk a little bit about the treatment that is currently available. It's called Tecoviramat and it's sold under the brand name T-Pox. It has not been approved by the FDA for monkeypox, but the CDC has made it available from the strategic national stockpile through expanded access during the global outbreak, which has caused about 5,800 probable or confirmed deaths in the United States. So T-pox is approved to treat smallpox, uh, but most people are not vaccinated for smallpox any longer in the United States. In fact, I sort of mistakenly thought that it might be similar to chickenpox vaccine. It's not, right? And so the, in the United States, we vaccinate for a chicken pox through the varis uh, a varicella vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, this has nothing to do with that. So uh, T-pox sounds like a wrapper, right? It does. Like T-pox. Right. Um, according to this article on CNN, I want to point this out to you, that the World Health Organization declared smallpox eradicated in 1980, but concerns that the virus could be weaponized drove the U.S. government to stockpile more than 1.7 million courses of the drug in the case of a bioterrorism event. So what we need to learn here, it also says T-pox is approved in the European Union to treat monkeypox as well as smallpox. So what's interesting is that the United States has this stockpile of T-pox in the event of an outbreak, which is what we have by some definitions, uh, but the United States is saving it 
in case there is some sort of bioweapon where it's released on the population. So, okay, conspiracy theorists have at it, right? T-pox is considered safe by the FDA but the C and the CDC. But look at this. Patients have to sign a waiver, a consent form, to get T-pox, and doctors must request access from the CDC or their local health department, which involves submitting things like lab tests and consent forms. Now, some hospitals won't use it because it's considered experimental, which is why now more often you can get it from research hospitals like um, a UC system or a, a university hospital. Um, this is an interesting quote from a doctor at UCSF. He says, you know, this is really interesting because now T-pox has been disproportionately used in academic medical centers that have the better infrastructure. And this doctor says, this is really interesting. And it was like that during COVID too, where a county that doesn't have T-pox will negotiate with another county and the hospital to take the patient if they are ill and would need T-pox. So we may get another patient from another county in the East Bay today. Uh, okay, some patients are saying that it takes up to four days to even get it. So it's possible that these declarations of emergency are here in order to get some of that stockpile that the United States government has. Perhaps, but I happen to think that it is something different. So here's my theory on the states of emergency and this new, you know, fear mongering about a pandemic. You know, even as Martavis uh, uh, Parker in our chat just said, yeah, Bill Gates released a book just a few months ago on getting ready for the next pandemic. President Biden said, we, you know, as soon as we have the next pandemic, like, so people talk about the pandemic, right? These planned events. And you have to think, oh, here we are going into a midterm election. You're going into the fall. Um, why is Nancy Pelosi suddenly flying to Taiwan? Why are we talking about states of emergency for monkeypox? Why is CNN and all of these other news organizations drumming up fear around, um, you know, pustules that pop up on your arm? Yeah. No deaths in the United States. You might feel some pain. You might have some flu. And Big Pharma is racing to get a vaccine out to people um, in in lieu in, in ahead of the midterm elections. And the uh, the idea is we don't want people going out into public. Here's my theory. We don't want you going out in public. We all want you doing mail-in balloting. Stay at home once again for midterm fear mongering. Uh, you know we'll have we'll have lockdowns. We'll have mandates. We'll put people behind. Make sure you can't go to schools. I don't know, but I, I guarantee you, you're going to start to see people mm, pushing. That's a long leap to make, though. Is it? We already went through this. Like again, I see someone in the chat for saying conspiracy theory things. facts. Because what are what are conspiracy theories, right? But just spoiler alerts, right? Six months from now, this stuff ends up coming true. We saw what happened during the last pandemic. Yeah. Right? We saw what happened with mail-in ballots. We saw what happened with uh, businesses being crushed. I, I don't deny that these things seem to be... But, but monkeypox? Why are we the, seeing states of emergency declared in blue states? I don't know. You know, the thing that bothers me the most about this is that I am I refuse to buy into another pandemic that makes everybody's body a weapon. Right. And so like, oh, I can't get close to you. Like you, we all recall how it felt to like see an elderly person and be like, I can't help you across the street because I might kill you. Right. right. Things that now make us treat our bodies as time bombs. I'm not I'm not here for it. I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. So, well, and you know, again, so this idea that if you if if you if you are a member of a certain community that you're more prone to getting this, um, you know, again, these sort of these big pushes from the media, and I just I'm always leery of this stuff. Like, where is the centralized messaging coming from? Well, when we find out that the CDC, we did a whole video yesterday. I encourage you all to go to watch the CDC video we did yesterday on the email leaks and the cover up, um, and what are they hiding at the CDC? Um, about the uh, adverse reporting system as it relates to other vaccines. What are they doing to also partner up with big tech companies to push out, um, you know, going and getting and, and getting jabs, right? The the Google and Facebook connection and all of this stuff that the CDC has now been um, caught red-handed with, right? Uh, that's been admitted to. So Again, I wonder where the central messaging comes from. And it's all so convenient as we get ready to go back to school. But right? what's interesting here and is that elections. if we're, if we're going to play this out as an intentional pandemic, this time they're starting with treatment, not necessarily vaccines, right? 
Whereas well, again, this with like, COVID, it seemed that there were ways to treat COVID that were not allowed to be talked about. And and all, the conversation centered around the vaccine only, right? But again, At this least, resveratrol study that we just talked about is being suppressed. Because there's T-pox. Right. Yeah. So you can pay, yeah, you so you can go get like a natural resveratrol, which is shown in this study to suppress, right? So, hey, it's natural, right? It comes from... Grapes, it may whatever. not be too long until people in our position won't be able to di discuss that either. Yeah, so you might not be able to say. Let's move on before we well, get in it'll trouble. Be retroactively banned for that. Um, so let's just say that resveratrol is also present in red wine. Uh -huh. And if you like that, if you like red wine, maybe that will uh, lessen your exposure to monkeypox. Yeah. So someone in the yeah, chat I'm said, glad hey, you caught my that because I was drinks. Drink. Sorry. My neighbor, someone in the chat says, my neighbor drinks and is acting like a monkey. So that, yeah, that could, also be. Might could be, could be, <laughs> you could have the red wine and act like a monkey, therefore getting monkey pox. Go ahead, Philip. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, it's a good thing you caught that because, because just because it's not, uh, uh, on the ban list now, if they put it on the ban list, they do go back. So we'll see how the, how yeah. that plays Isn't out. Amazing. Like we could have a video from a year ago where we talk about something that's now been, you know, and, and like. YouTube will go back and retroactively ban you for, for something, for yes. free, free speech. I mean, the free speech stuff is absolutely being crushed, right? I want to do a video this week on that because they've gone after Russell Brand now. They're, I mean, again, they're taking channels what down do left and right. Well, we'll talk about it another time. Oh. Um, 